What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Project Ozone Light. Oh, yeah, guys. So last episode, we set up this farm here, and we were trying to get all these different essences, especially the Inferium Essence, uh, the Tier 5s, to just be grown and stuff so we can collect a lot of this stuff while we're offline and doing other things. Now, unfortunately, for whatever reason, the dimensional transceiver that was underneath our farming station here stopped sending it power. Everything was turned on. Everything was working the way it was. It just was not sending power to our farming station. So this ran out of power and it stopped doing what it should be doing. Yeah. So I have removed the dimensional transceiver. I moved it down one block and I put some conduits in place here. Power and item conduits. So we're pulling the items out into the tra transceiver and we're pulling the power out of the transceiver into this thing. And it seems to be working now. I don't know if that stopped during a server reset or there might be something else I'm going to have to do here to try and get this thing to work. But yeah, we uh, we ended last episode having like 5,000 Inferium and we have like 3,000 now because I just spent some. I'm trying to get these seeds to grow faster. So we have these growth crystals, right? We have three of the normal ones and those are really slow. They're not like really fast. And then we have a tier two, which is supposed to be pretty fast, but not like the fastest, right? Uh, but these crops still grow really slow. Even with all of these things nearby, they're all supposed to affect the nine by nine area, right? So like this one right here, for instance, should be hit by all four of them, but this guy is going really slow. So mystical agriculture has, uh, what are those blocks called? Let's take a look. Mystical agriculture has not the inferior block, but the growth accelerator, these things. It says grows plants above and faster. So I made a stack of those. And as far as I understand it, those things are supposed to stack. Like this one would affect this one. This one would affect this one, this one, etc. And I've heard that these things stack all the way up to 64 blocks. I don't know if this is true or not, but I went with it. I made a stack of them and I put them all the way down. That's 64 blocks worth of those things underneath this one essence. Uh, that doesn't seem like it's going much faster. <laughs> Maybe it's going slightly faster. Maybe it's 10% faster than the other crops. It's not fast enough that it's noticeable, right? Yeah. So we need to figure this out. We need to get these things going faster. If we're going to have any chance of getting anywhere in mystical agriculture. So I want to start making some of these growth crystals. That is, that's going to be the goal for today. So the goal are the growth crystals. The tier one, the really slow ones, do require sea lanterns in the recipe as well, as well as this dirty glass and the compressed bone block. So we got bones under control. We have our mob farm going, not a big deal. Iron under control. Dirty glass is soul sand plus yellow stained glass. Soul sand we can get if we had another essence, right? We can get 20 of those for that. So that might be a crop that we should look at. Uh, what else? We can do witch water with sand in a stone barrel to get it. We can also infuse, or I guess use a conjuration catalyst and dupe soul sand if we had a conjuration catalyst. So that's definitely another thing that we could do. But yeah, we're going to have to figure this out. I think what we'll end up doing uh, for the soul sand, just go to the nether and farm it up. There is plenty of it there to gather. Sea lanterns, we don't have any uh, ocean monuments in Skyblock, right? So there are other ways to get this through Batania. We can put nether quartz in our mana pool to get the prismarine. That is definitely one way to do it. And then the prismarine crystals themselves, you can put the prismarine share with the alchemy catalyst to get those. Yeah. So probably what we'd want to do is be able to get the guardian essence, which is a tier three seed, but we need tier three chunks from mobs. I think you can craft those. Yeah. If we get, Four tier three chunks, we can craft this stuff around it to make it into the guardian chunk and make the guardian seed and eventually we'll get a lot of them. But yeah, we got to start <laughs> somewhere here. So we got to figure out where the tier three mob chunk comes from. Uh, I don't know. Okay. A creeper is a tier three. A rabbit's a tier three. A spider is a tier three. Uh, blizz, blitz, guardian, blizz, skeleton. And basals. So if we look, I don't think we have any. Oh, we do have some chunks in here, don't we? So we have some zone. Oh, we already have two creepers. We're halfway there. So that would be pretty awesome if we can. Oh, you know what? We also have a skeleton chunk. We should probably take this dagger, try and poke some more mobs, 
and see if we can get another one of these chunks. And then we should look at making the guardian seeds because then our life is going to be much easier. I think that's what we're going to do. I'm going to sleep away this rain and then we'll go see if we can get another chunk and we'll be right back. All right, guys. So here we are down at our mob farm. Yep. Our base is way up there. This is our mob farm down here, squid farm, etc. I just built another one of our early game mob farms. I was trying to think, how are we going to get the mobs that we want in a controlled area so they won't like explode or attack us or whatever? Yeah, I think just setting up one of these early game mob farms is probably the best way to do it. We can just here sit here and poke the monsters and collect their drops. And you know what? That first creeper right there just gave us exactly what we needed. I thought it was going to be a little bit more difficult than that. Get wrecked. There we go. So I guess we might keep this down here. We'll light it up to keep bass from spawning and it from affecting our mob farm, our normal mob farm. Let's get rid of you. Okay. So that's all lit up. Nothing else should be spawning there. Yeah. Everything is perfectly lit. So we can turn our regular mob farm back on and yeah, I think we're going to be fine. What the heck was that? A bat bag. Oh, right. So the texture on these bat bags are kind of weird. <laughs> But yeah, the bat bags, the only thing they have in them that I've ever seen is just a spawn bat egg, which is very odd. I don't know. But yeah, anyway, uh, that happened in the latest update where those things just don't seem to be working quite right. Uh, so yeah, let's put all this stuff away here, kind of clean up the inventory a little bit. So we have what we wanted here, the, the tier three chunks. We had the skeleton and we had like two of the creeper chunks, but now we have all of the chunks that we want. Now we're supposed to smelt those, I do believe. Uh, to turn them into a regular chunk, into a regular tier three chunk. Let's go ahead and just cook those up. Yeah, so now we have a tier three mob chunk for them. Uh, so now we can look at turning those into the guardian chunks. And again, in order to do that, we need the prismarine, some fish, and then our, we already have the chunks of the hard parts done. Yeah, so we just need nether quartz through the mana pool with, hold on a second, that was with the alchemy catalyst, which we have right here, so quartz. All right, so back at the mana pool, we can just go ahead and remove some of this stuff here. Get rid of that, get rid of that, and place that right like that, and we'll put this back here so nothing falls down. And then all we have to do is just drop those in there, right? With our magnet turned off, obviously. <laughs> so it doesn't pull it back into our inventory. And there we go. There's Prismarine. Oh, I'm collecting the Blacker Lotus. Like, why, why did I get one of those? <laughs> and the mana pool fills up completely again, automatically. That's really good. Okay, so now we have that. We need fish. Uh, fish is a thing that we don't have. Obviously, we can go fishing for it. Guardian Essence will eventually turn into it. Uh, it looks like a puffer fish turns into a fish. It looks like we had any of those. We could convert them between, but we don't have any of those. Okay. I think we're going to have to do a little bit of fishing then. That's everybody's favorite mini game in any game is fishing. I'm trying to think, do we have a spot around here where we can fish? We have infinite water. I guess we could fish right there in the aqueous accumulator. We have this over here. Yeah, I guess we could try fishing in this little thing. Give this a go, see how it works. Uh, so we need stick. String. You know, I'm kind of thinking, did we get fish out of our loot bags? Was that a thing? I don't see any fish in here. So we might have to do this just like what we're doing right now in order to get fish, or there might be some other way I don't know about. But anyway, we'll just sit here. We'll fish for a little while. <laughs> uh, let's see if we can do one of these together. Is that bobber bobbing? Normally, when you put down the bobber in Minecraft, you'll see like these particles. I, I don't think that one was working. Is that one working? It looks like it's bobbing. You'll see like particles rush towards it. And when the particles hit it, you're supposed to right click. I don't know. It's, it's acting kind of weird. We might have to set up like a little bit bigger of a pool or maybe go down there to our squid farm. We can fish into that one. That's two blocks deep. That might work a little bit better for us. You know, what? let's try that. Let's go all the way down to the mob farm once again and see if we can get going in this one here. Nope. So I go right through that. The bobber appears to be like floating on it. 
on top of the water. I'm not sure what's going on here. <laughs> so anyway, I'll just keep doing this for a little while. See if I can get this to work and then we'll be back guys. Well, I tell you guys what, as much fun as fishing is, I think I got a better idea here. So I was fishing for a while using an unenchanted rod and it's taking forever for the fish to be attracted to it, but they were attracted to it. We were collecting loot. And I was like, you know what? We should probably go enchant our fishing rod because there's enchantments. There's luck of the sea, there's lure, which, you know, gives you better drops, I think, or makes the fish come in faster. One of the two. Anyway, so those enchantments we have on there. And then I also got on breaking three, so the rod will last longer. And then we also got soulbound, so in case I die, we can still fish. Anyway, uh, so we did all of that. Uh, in the process, I ended up making some magical wood. We needed to have level 30 enchantments. So I made this magical wood stuff. You make a bookshelf, you craft it with a gold ingot in your inventory. When you have four levels of experience, uh, yeah, we can see the recipe right here. So bookshelf plus gold, four XP, it takes off your XP bar here, and then you can make this. So six of those will give you a level 30 enchant. I'm going to try enchanting that. Yeah, so that gives you up to level 30 here. Um, but anyway, so we have a luck of the sea and breaking three lure three soul bound. The only thing that could use as better is mending. So it'll always repair itself. But yeah, I think we're going to put that aside for the moment. I was sitting there as I was fishing. It's like, you know, isn't there an automatic way to do this? Yep. Sure enough. There's a fisher from MFR and I think it's time that we look at making one of these. Yep. All right, well, I tried doing it the fast way, or what I assumed was the fast way. By the way, I made a lot of fishing rods, and I did a lot of enchanting here, trying to get one that had some stuff. Like, we got one with just soul bound on it, and I took all the ones that had the good stuff down below to our anvil, and I just kind of combined them all together. But I think the fisher is probably going to be the way that we're going to want to go here. Uh, do we have a recipe for a machine a chassis? We do. Let's make a machine chassis. Okay, so we got that going on. And then we have everything else in the system. Surprise, surprise. All right. I made a few of these Z-Logic controllers the last time we were messing around with that just as a test to make sure things were working right. So yeah, here's a Fisher. And it is storing energy from our wireless thingy up there. Uh, so this needs to be in water, I believe. I forget how this works. Let's take a look. So it needs a fishing rod and it needs to be, I think, above the surface of the water. I think that's all it needs. Uh, so we, oh man, this thing takes forever to break. Oh, it says I should use a wrench on it is what the tool tip at the top said. All right. So we have the fisher. We're going to need to provide that thing power. So can I make a dimensional transceiver? I forget if I have everything in the system. Do it looks like we do. So we'll just go ahead and auto craft that up. We have a thing in there for an ender resonator now. So we can craft that using your slice and splice. And then I guess we're going to want ourselves some kind of a chest. Let's use a slightly larger chest to do this. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I keep picking up drops around here that this isn't picking up, and I'm not entirely sure why that is. I'll have to look in that. This thing has the maximum range on it. I might have to move that closer to the center or something. Anyway, so we have our fisher. I think if we put it right like that, that should be okay. We'll put a chest. I don't know if the chest has to be on the top or just next to it. So we'll try that and we'll put this here and we'll put a light source here and not place the light. No, it doesn't want me to place a light on anything here. Ah, okay, fine. I was going to place the torch. I guess that's one of the downfalls of this. It won't let you place it on like, uh, what are these called? A tile entity, something you right click on that's got inventory or another screen. Okay, so let's do power out onto the receive. So that should give it power. We'll give this thing its fishing rod. The one that I was just using. And hopefully if things go well, it should just start producing fish. Did it do a thing? I don't see anything in there. They're trying to put it in this? Hmm. Maybe this has to be above water. Does it say on here? Was there? No, it doesn't see on here. It's probably a book or a manual or something. Let's try putting this directly above the water. Maybe that'll be what we need to do. I have used these before, but it's been a little bit of time since I last used one. So I don't remember all the ins and outs of these things. Hopefully, whoop, 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 whoop. hopefully uh, we'll get this going. I don't have a wrench on me. We'll just break it. 
All right, so let's try placing this right here directly above the water. And then maybe it has to be in the center of the three by three. Like I said, it's been a while since I've used one of these things. I don't remember exactly everything. Hmm, still nothing. Okay, we'll move it into the center of the three by three and give that one a go. We'll have to use some other kind of a block here as a spacer. Probably this thing. Place it there. And fishing rod. And then I'll give it an inventory. Okay. So this doesn't say idle anymore. It says work. Okay, so it looks like it's doing something now. All right, so I guess at the end of its work cycle, it should get a fish of some description. Is there a way to speed this up? I feel like this should probably go faster. Like if it only gives us one fish at the end of that, that's gonna be really slow. I guess though, if this is just collecting fish all the time while we're offline, it should be okay. But anyway, in the meantime, I have collected like this raw bass and this raw sardine and a raw anchovy. So yeah, we have these, so that should allow us to make at least two of the chunks that we're trying to make here, right? So two fish, two prismarine gives us a chunk. So we should be able to make one more here. Cool. All right, so I guess we're just gonna wait until <laughs> this thing does its work. It says the, this machine has stuffed items. So how do we get the items out of that? Does the inventory have to be on the side, not the top? I'm so confused. Okay, so it just popped that fish to the... I don't get it. Maybe it doesn't like these slightly larger chests. Maybe it has to be a vanilla chest. Or maybe it has to be a hopper. I don't know. We'll try a different chest on here. It didn't seem to like the slightly larger one for some reason. Maybe this one will be better. Anyway, I'll play around with this for a little while. I'll collect the required fish that we need, and then we'll be right back, guys. All right, so we got our guardian seeds made and I planted them down. I've been sitting here watering them and letting them grow and spread and so on. So we got a decent amount of these things now. Like this whole section over here is full, except for one seed, which I have put over into this one to lock it. And then this side over here, we have two more guardian, or I guess four more guardian seeds. So yeah, we're doing pretty good. Uh, we'll be collecting a lot of that essence. So guardian, we have 114 essence in the system. It's not bad. So we can start looking at these growth crystals. So again, to make the growth crystal, we need the bone block, the sea lanterns. We should probably start making some of the recipes here so we can automatically make sea lanterns out of the essence, right? So we want to make prismarine crystals. We'll get a pattern for that. We want to make the other ones here, the prismarine itself. All right, so you get a lot of that for both of those. It's 12 of these and 16 of those. Yeah, that's not bad. I guess that's four of the Guardian Essence, though, for 16 and three of them for 12. So you get, like, four pieces per Essence, I guess. Uh, so let's put these patterns in here. Find a spot for those guys. That should be good. That should be good. All right, so we want to make a pattern for the Sea Lantern as well. Yeah, it doesn't look like we have that. So we need to do the crystal thing. What are those things called? Prismarine crystals. All right, we'll craft those up right away so we can make ourselves a pattern for that. Cool. So now we should be able to make sea lanterns whenever we want to, provided we have that essence in the system. Uh, other things we're going to want to make, uh, bone block. Yeah, we have plenty of bones, but we need the recipe to turn it into the bone block itself. I'll put one in there. And then we can do the dirty glass. So I did not go to the nether yet to farm up any of that soul sand. I do think we have some in the system. Let's take a look real quick. How much do we have? 211? That should be okay. So we're making the growth crystals. Not really so we use the growth crystals, but so we can upgrade them to the next tier because they are required in the next recipe. So the next recipe is fused quartz, mana infused, or mithril, right? And then end crystals. Now the end crystal is going to be a little tricky. Glass panes are fine. Gas tears, I saw that we can use these catalyzing glands, which we have a lot of, I do believe. Yeah, we have like a full chest full of those things. So we can make, you know, like a stack of gas tears, no problem, right? We have those all day long. But yeah, the, uh, the hard part here is going to be the nether star. I'm not so sure if we're going to be able to make nether stars very easily. Uh, there are mystical 
crops for that. Mystical agriculture crops for that. Other than that, we can use the cheaty book if we can make the cheaty book. I don't know if that's giving to given to us as a reward because I don't see a recipe in here on how to make this thing. So I feel like that's been disabled. Uh, so pretty much where we're left at at this point is fighting the wither boss. <laughs> so that's one of those things we're going to have to start looking at. But before we get into that, let's try and make some of these growth crystals. I'm sure we're going to need a lot of those. Did I make a recipe for the crystal itself? No, I made a recipe for the dirty glass. Let's make one thing of dirty glass so we can make the growth crystal. And then a sea lantern. All right, place that there. And there we go. There's a pattern. So we can make those all we want to, as long as we have all the resources. Okay, cool. So if I want to make a growth crystal and say, I don't know, how about like 18 of those? Looks like we can do it. We need 32 guardian essence and we have everything else in the system. Yeah, it looks like we got those things crafting up just fine. Okay, so 18 of these things. I did kind of spread these crystals out a little bit. I felt like having them all in one line underneath one crop wasn't really doing much. This doesn't really feel like it's doing much either. Uh, checks up to two blocks up or down. So I kind of feel like we should get rid of these things since they don't appear to be doing much. And we can take these guys here and kind of place them right like this. I think that is how that's working. And then we got more on this side. Yeah, I don't really know where these all go, to be honest. I guess I'll just kind of place them right along like that. We'll see if we get any difference here. But yeah, with having all those extra growth crystals in there, I think their effects stack, right? So a lot of them together, even though they're like the slow ones, should help us out more. At least that's the, the hope here. How much more of the Guardian stuff do we have? Oh, we, you know, we have a decent amount of that. Maybe we should make more of these tier ones and we can upgrade them to the tier two later. Let's do like, I don't know, 18 more. I think that should be fine. It looks like we got everything else in the system to do that. Cool. All right. So do these other ones down there. Go and place these guys all along like this. And I guess I will place the last three right there. So is that going to be better than what we had there before? Honestly, I don't know. Like, it doesn't really look like these are going fast. Maybe they're going slightly faster. It's really hard to say, right? We definitely have a lot more particles around, so it feels like things are happening. But yeah, I don't know. It's going to be one of those things where, like, I don't know if we'll even be able to tell, to be completely honest. I feel like once we upgrade them to the next tier, uh, it'll definitely look like they're going faster. But once we upgrade them to the final tier, like these things will start instant growing depending on how many of those we have nearby. But I am seeing a lot of these things being mature a lot more soon or a lot sooner than they were before. So I don't know. I have hopes. Oh, you know what? I think I placed some of those in the wrong spot, didn't I? I wanted those above. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to have to replace these. I wanted those things directly below the, the fertile soil. And I put that underneath the grass block. Okay. But we'll go ahead and place these in the correct spot here underneath all of our crops. Well, I have been watching the farm and it does appear crops are growing faster, right? You're seeing a lot of these full grown mature crops like every few seconds. I think that's going to be pretty good. I was expecting this not to go very fast at all without any of those upgrades down below. Like it was taking 10 minutes for a crop to become mature it's going a lot faster than that now. So yeah, pretty happy about that. We definitely want to upgrade them, but for right now, it's going to get us where we need to be. Okay. So now that we got all of that taken care of, next thing I'd like to do is start looking at some quests here. Uh, so we did the watering can part four. We made the prudentium watering can. Let's take a loot chest. We'll do the top one. We'll claim that next one's intermedium watering can, the orange one. So yeah, it wants us to have all of this stuff. Now we're starting to get this fertilized essence. This was the thing that was kind of holding us back a little bit. Yeah, we now are starting to get this stuff quite quickly. So we should be able to start busting through some of these watering can quests, which I think is going to be fine. Uh, so we need to get ourselves the prudentium ingot. I don't think we ever made a recipe for that. 
So it might be a good idea to go through and do this. We need Inferium Ingot. We don't even have a recipe for an Inferium Ingot? Okay, well... What do we have here? <laughs> I thought we made some of these, but I guess I did it all by hand. Whoops, when I clicked on the wrong thing. I thought I did these, but I guess I must have made them all by hand. So we need Mithril plus Prosperity Shard. So I guess we'll go through and make some recipes for these things because we're definitely going to need them. Uh, so yeah, let's make a recipe for this. Put one in the system. We'll go through and we'll go to each one of these and make a new one. So there's one of those. And then we're going to need the Prudentium in order to make this one. Okay, and then I think we need to make the uh, the previous ingot as well. It's one of the things that's kind of annoying about Applied Energistics that you have to have like the item already in your system in order to craft it. <laughs> yeah, I think in 1.12, that's not an issue anymore, but yeah, currently definitely it's one of those things that uh, is kind of annoying. Oh no, 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 it's Inferium ingot. All right, so we can craft one of those. That goes here to make the next one that we can make a Prudentium ingot. Okay, where's this go right there? All right. Make another one of these guys, like a so. And then we need that plus Intermedium Essence. And we'll craft one of those so we can make the recipe. Cool, all right, so we'll go and make one more of these things, like so and put it in the system. And then we never have to worry about crafting those things again. Okay, so enter medium. We want four of those. Go and craft those up while we're looking at some other stuff here. So we need a theoretical infinite water source. Now we have the water seeds going. We have plenty of water essence now, 320. Yeah, we're never gonna have to worry about those again, pretty much. So we need more enter medium. And they're making over here trying to push me around. What a guy. Okay, and then we need a gold block, which I'm pretty sure we didn't have. And then one of these things, which requires one of those. Okay, what is that thing? That is a base essence ingot. Base essence ingot. I should probably make a recipe for these. I kind of feel like, well, maybe we won't be making these. I don't know. I feel like we should make a recipe for that. Man, this guy's just all up in my business. I can't get around him at all. Okay, so we'll do this one, make a recipe for that. Put that in the system so we can make the next recipe. So that's the Prudentium Inferium. Is this what, wait, which one do we just make Inferium? So we need to do the Prudentium one. That would be this. Okay, so we have everything but the corner things, which is Prudentium Essence. All right, so we need to make four of these guys. We'll make the pattern for that so we never, ever, we never ever have to make it again. We'll just manually craft that, and that way we'll keep these things here. Uh, so next one is this intermedium, and it looks like we can make a recipe for that. All right, so we'll just put all of those into the system. Intermedium fertilization core. That'll save us a lot of time when we go and upgrade to the next one. All right, well, there we go. There's an intermediate watering can. Ah, some of these things just take so long to do. Were we doing the middle loot chest? I don't remember which one. So I'm kind of curious, this thing. Okay, so this just does a five by five. I don't know if it does it any faster or if it's just an area of effect. Like it can just water that many more crops. Not really seeing, I mean, these crops are already going pretty fast. Maybe it is, maybe the watering can is actually affecting these crops now. It seemed like with the last one, I've seen they're holding the watering can on it and like it worked for about 10 seconds and then it stopped working for like a minute. I don't know if there's something like that going on with this one, uh, but the next watering can uh, that we can do here was this one, the reinforced watering can. Now this one was supposed to be a really, really great watering can. Like it's supposed to grow crops really fast. So hopefully the falling watering cans after this will follow suit. But let's take a look at the reinforced watering can. Let's see how this guy performs. So we need refined obsidian ingot. Oh, we can't quite do that yet. We need refined obsidian, which means we need a metallurgic infuser. Yeah, we need to get into mechanism. 
before we can do all of this. Oh boy, I wasn't ready for that. Now, the only mechanism machine that we've made so far is just this one metallurgic infuser. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in mechanism that we should look at doing. Like, there's also... Hmm... There's the enrichment chamber that we're gonna want with the metallurgic infusers. We want, like, four of them, because there's, like, four different types of stuff that you can use in that. Yeah, that's gonna be one of those things that's gonna be kind of a pain to do, I think. But it's one of those things that we should do. So maybe I should go ahead and make a few more of these and then we can look at and we can look at upgrading our mechanism stuff and getting our watering can to the next level. Hmm. Definitely something to think about. I think we'll probably end up saving that for next time. But first of all, let's go ahead and open this. We got a flask of magnet mag maskin fire resistance and 464k ME storage components. That's pretty cool. I mean, we already have all the storage components we could possibly ever want, but I guess if we ever run out of stuff, huh, we can make more discs using those. Anyway, guys, we're going to go and wrap the episode up here for today. We got a lot of good stuff going on now that we have our mystical agriculture under control. Yeah, that was one of those things I was kind of concerned about because it was going so slow before. I wasn't sure like we we're going to be able to keep up with this, but yeah, apparently just adding in all of those tier one growth crystals definitely seems to make these things go a lot faster uh we have it set up now the server's restarted and i made sure that the uh farming station there was still working so i don't think anything's gonna stop us from collecting all the things anymore which is gonna be great but anyway guys that's gonna do it for today thank you guys for watching remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it and we'll see you next time thanks for watching guys Bye bye